Since the 2008 global financial crisis, central banking has been turned on its head, with policymakers using one untried tool after another to boost demand. But the one thing that has remained constant may be the most in need of a rethink – inflation targets. After years of unprecedented monetary easing, the world's major central banks are shrinking their balance sheets and raising their interest rates, with the U.S. Federal Reserve in the lead. Under Jerome Powell, Donald Trump's choice to be the next Fed chair, this normalization process is set to continue. But there are major obstacles ahead. Despite central banks' massive interventions, inflation has so far remained below target. The ECB's bond buying program has already exceeded 2 trillion euros, yet the euro remains stubbornly strong and inflation low. Core inflation in the U.S. has fallen this year. But meeting the inflation target is critical to central banks' credibility, and thus their hard-won political independence. That's why the Bank of Japan, for one, has announced that it won't stop its massive monetary easing until inflation exceeds 2%. Yet that target is still far off. In September 2017, consumer prices rose just 0.7% year-on-year. One problem is that the usual drivers of inflation aren't doing their jobs. For example, low unemployment is supposed to boost wage inflation, yet this year, Japanese unemployment reached a 22-year low of 2.8%. In the U.S., unemployment has fallen to 4.4%. Meanwhile, output growth in Japan, Europe, and especially the U.S. is accelerating. According to NYU's Nouriel Roubini, inflationless growth may be the result of supply shocks, from low commodity prices to cheap goods from China. The Bank for International Settlements has suggested that those shocks are permanent and that the inflation target should be lowered to 0%. In any case, monetary policy is a blunt instrument for stimulating an economy. What's really needed is fiscal policy. Yet, with the exception of China and Japan, fiscal stimulus has been conspicuously absent. The EU actually went the opposite route, forcing many countries to pursue austerity policies after the crisis. When inflation targeting was established as central banks' primary goal, monetary policymaking was a very different game. Central banks certainly weren't shouldering the burden of macroeconomic stewardship alone. As Powell takes the reins at the Fed, by far the world's most influential central bank, he's going to have to confront far more fundamental questions than when to raise interest rates.